So now we come to the chain rule. So the chain rule is probably, of all the derivative rules, um, perhaps the most important. Um, may, some might argue the product rule is just as important as the chain rule. Certainly they're both essential. Um, the, uh, the chain rule kind of completes the picture for us. Um, a lot, there are a lot of derivatives that we don't yet know how to do, um, and almost all of them will be resolved using the chain rule or some variation on the chain rule. Um, once we have the chain rule in place, um, we're going to be pretty much good to go with the derivative of almost any function you can think of writing down. Okay. Now, uh, the chain rule is there to deal with compositions, right? Uh, Any time that we have the composition of two functions, f of g of x, right? So for example, uh, if f of x is sine x and g of x is, is x squared, we would have, say, f composed with g being sine of x squared. Uh, of course, we could also do g composed with f, and that would be sine x and then squared, so sine squared x. And of course, as you'll all remember when you learn about compositions in your, in your pre-calculus, um, the order matters, right? These are not the same function. Um, we don't yet know how to take the derivative of, well, certainly not this one. This one, of course, we can, we can do something with it because we can, we can write this as sine x times sine x. And so if we wanted to take the derivative of sine squared x, we could use the product rule, right? Sine x, so we do the derivative of sine, which is cos. So we have cos x times sine x, and then sine times the derivative of sine, which again is cos. And so you'll notice that what we get here is 2 sine x times cosine x. All right, um, so it's, it's certainly not as simple as something like the derivative of a composition being the composition of the derivatives, right? If, if that were true, um, we would, our answer here would have been just 2 times cos x, but we have this sign in there. So something more complicated is going on. Um, here are a few more examples that we could look at to see if we can try and, and establish a pattern, see if we can figure out what's going on. Um, these are all compositions, right? We have, we have the polynomial function 1 minus x uh, being composed with a power function. Uh, now, the reason that these are useful examples is we do know how to do these without the chain rule um, because we can multiply these all out. 1 minus x, if I square that, I get 1 minus 2x plus x squared. And so f prime of x is going to be minus 2 plus 2x. Okay? And it might be useful to note that if we factor out the 2, in fact, if we factor out the minus 2, we're left with minus 2 times 1 minus x. Um, similarly here, using binomial theorem, I can multiply out the cube. This is going to be 1 minus... 3x plus 3x squared minus x cubed. So if I take the derivative, g prime, right, I can simply differentiate term by term. Derivative of 1 is 0, I get minus 3 plus 6x minus 3x squared. Um, you might notice there's a common minus 3 there. Minus 3 times 1 minus 2x plus x squared. And, oh, that's up here. 1 minus 2x plus x squared. This is minus 3 times 1 minus x all squared. Interesting. Okay. What about h of x? Well... For h of x, again, we can use binomial theorem. Uh, 1 minus 4x plus 
x squared minus 4x cubed plus x to the 4. We can expand that all out. That allows us to compute h prime. h prime is going to be minus 4 plus 12x minus 12x squared plus 4x cubed. Um, this time, if we factor out that minus 4, we're left with 1 minus 3x plus 3x squared minus x cubed. And again, we see something that we recognize from above. This is minus 4 times 1 minus x cubed. Okay, interesting. Um, we notice something that looks a little bit like the power rule, right? Um, 2 comes down in front and then we, we reduce the exponent by 1. Uh, there's just one thing that's a little bit different. It's not just a 2 that's coming down in front, there's a minus 2, right? Here, uh, 3 comes down. If we, if we brought the 3 down and we subtract 1 from the exponent, we would have 3 times 1 minus x squared, which we have, but there's this minus sign. Same thing here. If we just did the power rule, right? Um, 4 comes down, subtract 1 from the exponent. Ah, but there's this minus sign. So we, we look at what we have here, we look at what we have here, and we kind of try to think about what's going on, right? So what's going in common? Um, what's common? Well, okay, here we did the square of sine, right? Uh, 2 comes down in front. So there's that power rule going on, right? Same kind of power rule thing going on. Um, what do we know about cosine? Well, cosine is the derivative of sine, right? So here we kind of have the derivative of, you know, the function that's on the outside, right? This is sine x and then squared. That's what we have here. So here's the sort of the derivative of, of the outside part, right? Except we leave the inside alone. But then we've multiplied by the derivative of the inside. There's the cos. Um, does that work over here? Well, what is this? Minus sine. That's a minus 1. Minus 1 does happen to be the derivative of 1 minus x, okay? So where is that minus sign coming from? Well, one place maybe it's coming from is it's coming from the derivative of the inside. So we're going to do power rule for the derivative of that outside function, right? Power rule, power rule. And then in each case, if we multiply by the derivative of the inside, oh, we get the minus sign, right? And then we have the answer. Um, so that seems like a pattern. That seems like maybe it is the right answer. And uh, I think it is. We'll state the result in the next video.